in the memory of late Mrs. Alka Hemant Patil. We are glad to present our audio articles for inspiring disabled persons to achieve greater heights in their career. Under the project of Client Service Department of National Association for the Blind, India, to empower the disabled in tribal, rural and semi-urban areas of our country. Diligence is the mother of good luck. Benjamin Franklin Vishaka More The mysterious blue mountains with white peaks of snow hold a special significance for Vishaka and her husband Nagraj More. It was on a mountain trekking course organized by the Himalayan Mountaineering Institute Darjeeling in collaboration with the Society for the Visually Handicapped Calcutta that they decided to marry. When Vishaka was born with slanting eyes and curvature of both little fingers, she was diagnosed with Stills disease. Not aware of the full implications of this disease, her despairing parents were determined to bring Vishaka up in as normal a manner as they could. Vishaka's early recollection of life is cluttered with visits to the doctors, eye operations and the smell of nasty medicines as she developed glaucoma and despite all effort her vision dimmed rapidly. But she remembers quite distinctly too the joy of soft, comforting laps, of many hugs and the irresistible clink of spoon against glass as her mother stirred sugar into her delicious, frothy milk. School in Faridabad had to be abandoned due to her optic problems and Vishaka studied until the 10th standard in a blind school in Delhi. Seeking admission for her 11th and 12th standards in an integrated school entailed breaking down the wall of the principal's ambivalence. This was much more difficult and exhausting a task than getting concurrence from the open-minded zonal education lady officer for Vishaka to be admitted. But Vishaka soon put an end to all misgivings by topping her class each year. On looking back at her growing years, Vishaka feels a definite pang of dissatisfaction at the unequal education facilities provided for the visually disabled. Schools exempt blind students from subjects like mathematics instead of encouraging them to master it, she says with feeling. We still have a very long way to go in enabling blind students to achieve their potential. Active of mind and sporty in spirit, Vishaka did not let her disability restrain her from participating most actively in sports and extracurricular activities during her school years. She took part in debates, essay competitions, in car rallies for the blind as a navigator and in radio programs. She went on national integration camps for trekking and even played musical instruments. She brought home several trophies rewarding her parents who rejoiced in the fact that she was growing up with her self-esteem well intact. Having decided that she would be a lawyer, Vishaka joined Hindu College in Delhi with political science as her subject. But somewhere along the way, the thought of doing an MBA appealed to her and took root in her mind. Quite confident that with her capabilities she could get admission in a premium MBA institute, Vishaka was completely heartbroken when her parents, for the first time, stymied her proposed plans of leaving home. They could not get themselves to allow her to live outside the limits of their careful protection. So Vishaka stayed and after sulking for a while, she joined the Four School of Management for a part-time MBA course. She had by now become completely computer savvy. She did odd jobs for the next couple of years, including training at DCM Industries and working with an agency for the then 
ANZ Greenlays Bank to verify credit card applicants. She was introduced then to Nagraj, a visually impaired employee of Bharat Petroleum. Their unusual courtship in the misty mountains followed and in 1999, Vishaka found herself married and in Bombay. During her disappointing search for a job in Bombay, which she found rather impersonal after easy-going Delhi, Vishaka learnt about medical transcription and decided to get trained to be a transcriptionist. It took her seven months and a lot of assiduity to master the course, scanning all the notes into her computer to study. But eventually she did get the job which entails sharp precision and minute attention to detail, which sometimes proves taxing even for sighted people. The files dictated by the doctors in the US are downloaded overnight as sound files. These contain medical case histories. Vishaka's job is to listen to these and convert them into word files, keeping an ear out for errors and doubtful areas which it is the duty of the transcriptionist to point out. The files are finally checked by quality assurance staff before being sent back. Sometimes the audio is really unclear because the doctor may have been recording with his mouth full of food so that causes a slight problem, Vishaka laughs, but one manages to get around it. She uses a normal keyboard with a job access with speech, JAWS software, which helps her to edit her work as she types it in. And so acute is her hearing that she catches the slightest spelling mistake or even a wrongly placed punctuation mark. NAB India focused the spotlight on Vishaka and she was awarded the Neelam Kanga Prize for entering a new field as a medical transcriptionist in 2002. I felt really happy. It was great, fabulous, Vishaka says happily. It increased her confidence and motivated her further. And while she's content with her job for the moment, she knows that she's a manager at heart. My strong point is my ability to organize and coordinate. I have the picture of an ideal job in the field of finance management in my mind. But it is not yet materialized for me, she says wistfully, but full of hope. Will preconditioned, rigid notions result in ignoring this brilliant, vibrant lady who has so much to contribute? Or will Mumbai, this magnanimous, open-hearted city of opportunity, embrace Vishaka and fulfill her well-deserved dream? Music hath charm to soothe the savage breast, to soften rocks or bend a knotted oak. Congreve Hiru Chandnani Books by Amitav Ghosh, P.G. Woodhouse, Ladlam, Jeffrey Archer and several others line Hiru Chandnani's bookshelf. And beside them sits a scanner which converts two pages at a time into an audio format for 25-year-old Hiru who was born blind. Hiru grew up happily listening to the music of the world around her. People and places for her were always voices and sounds. Her father's soothing tenor and her mother's soprano were the first sounds Hiru associated with love, comfort, joy and security. Springing from a highly supportive family who took her disability most philosophically, Hiru never felt inferior at any level. A happy, well-adjusted child, she vividly remembers feeling bewildered on the first day at nursery school when she heard so many other children crying and refusing to stay. Hiru was educated throughout in mainstream school systems and made wonderful friends. She completed her ICSC from Tunbridge High School, Bangalore, securing high marks. She preserves the memory of her school days as a cherished time of her life, 
for all the loving care and attention she received from the staff and students all through. She remembers gratefully the special resource teachers who helped her after class and enabled her to keep up and perform to her best capacity. During her ISC2, which she did from Bishop Cotton School, Bangalore, Hiru never felt discriminated against or lesser than any of her contemporaries. She participated in all activities with her friends and was guide and counsellor to many of them even then. They in turn ungrudgingly read out books which were always her passion and delight. At home, her mother never believed in pampering her daughter unduly. Hiru was treated just like her older sister except when it came to travelling in the crowded city of Bangalore. That is the only area where I am dependent, Hiru says candidly. I never felt confident enough to travel alone in buses and taxis. It was not until she wanted to take psychology in college that Hiru came up against a real obstacle in life. The faculty was not in favour of taking on a blind girl. They believed that to be a good psychologist it was necessary to be cited. But I knew that I could do it, Hiru says. I heard everything I needed to know about a person. I think I am pretty accurate in my judgement of people. With support from the principal of Mount Carmel College, Hiru was admitted and passed her BA with flying colours. For her MSc from Bangalore University, Hiru specialised in industrial and organisational psychology. Here too, she secured an average of 70%, proving conclusively what determination and hard work can achieve. I am a people's person, Hiru says. I understand and can help solve problems without getting emotionally involved myself, and that is what is required to be a good psychologist. Industrial psychology gave Hiru an entry into the corporate world, which is where she wants to be. Today, she is a self-employed organizational psychologist in Bangalore and develops in-house psychometric tests, which are custom-made for the companies she works with. She hopes one day to be able to expand into training, recruitment and conducting performance appraisals. A little lady of many talents with a song hidden in her heart, Hiru was introduced to Western classical music when her mother enrolled both her girls into music classes. Hiru was 10 years old then and her natural talent mesmerized her, her teachers. A recipient of the Rachel Morgan Award and the Admiral Dawson Award for Western Classical Singing, Hiru practices her music, vocal and piano, at least for two hours every day. She has completed Grade 8 level in singing from the Associated Board for the Royal School of Music, London, and is doing the Grade 8 of piano from the same school. Music is within me and a big part of my life, she says with contentment. It was through her music class that Hiru heard about the Asian Youth Choir held in Japan as a part of the Niigata Asian Cultural Festival. Supported by her family and music teacher, to whom she owes a lot, Hiru sent in an application and an audition tape, and she was chosen. She was the first and only Indian amongst 56 other members from nine different countries to be part of the choir. The dedication I witnessed amongst the members was something brilliant, Hiru says with awe. And in the two weeks she spent in Japan, she made friends for life. No one discriminated against her or doubted her capability and having travelled widely in India with her family, Hiru was not at all nervous to travel abroad alone. She returned home having touched many high notes and achieved sublime personal success. But never one for darling, she plunged into her life with renewed vigour. 
along with planning to do an MBA or a PhD in industrial psychology to further her personal growth, Hiru gave back to society in a generous way. She is deeply committed to fundraising for NGOs and voluntary organizations. She performs at charity shows and participates in plays to generate public awareness about the capabilities of the disabled. Hiru is also the role model, career guide and counsellor for visually impaired persons. Very interested in languages, Hiru did a three-year diploma course in French but was not able to complete the senior diploma due to unavailability of course books in Braille. Her fascination with the German language so far has remained only a dream because she was refused admission to the course on grounds of her visual impairment. To sum up her young life so far, Hiru says, I definitely feel great but personally there's lots more to do and I'm glad that I'm on my way. Hiru was awarded the prestigious Neelam Kanga Prize in 2003 for being the first disabled lady to go this far in Western classical music, also for opening up the field of industrial and organizational psychology. With many miles still to go, the spotlight must remain on this promising, multi-talented young lady who is determined to turn her congenital impairment into the motivation for a lifetime of outstanding achievement. Life shrinks or expands in proportion to one's courage. Anais Nin Kanchengaba Prison doors clang open for the tall, imposing lady studying prison reforms, interviewing jailers and lady prisoners for her research work. A student, completing her LLM from Calcutta Law College, prepares a brief for a gender issue related ca case at court. A daring lady mountaineer scales a Himalayan peak at 14,500 feet. A girl guide receives the coveted President's Award. Vignettes from the many-faceted life of Kanchan Gaba, a Tony at law, sports person, good human being and a visually impaired lady. Collecting fireflies in matchboxes, running through golden fields of mustard with her siblings and cousins and climbing into the larder cupboard and tipping it over is what Kanchan remembers of her ancestral village home in the Punjab. She remembers clearly rounding the bend in the road and seeing the tall yellow house called Chiriamur which meant that they had reached her grandparents' home a place full of mysterious surprises. She remembers seeing all this and much more, but only until the age of eight years, after which Kanchan lost her vision to retina detachment. Kanchan completed her schooling from the Calcutta Blind School with the first division and her ISC from Lady Brabourne College also with the first division and was chosen for a national scholarship. For her graduation, when Kanchan wanted to take sociology as her major, she came up against reluctant murmurings about admitting blind students. This was a shock for Kanchan, who knew what her capabilities were and wondered how educated people could doubt her eligibility only on the basis of her disability. Society is not really concerned with the disabled, Kanchan says. Even parents of disabled children have a problem with their capability. And while she concedes that society has become more aware and concerned today, the faith is still lacking. There has been no major revolution in the preconceived ways of perceiving the disabled. They are still viewed as incapable. Kanchan's parents, however, believed in her and were most supportive of everything she wanted to do, encouraging her at every step. Her father, very busy running his own business, always had time to spend with his family and take interest in their doings. If I ever have to think of an ideal role model, I think of him, Kanchan says with affection.
and my mother is the epitome of love and sacrifice. She was always there for us and looking after us as only she can. It was through her school and college when she excelled at debates and elocution that the idea of becoming a lawyer took seed in Kanchan's mind. So after her graduation, she joined the law school of Calcutta and is today completing her LLM. Her focus is on human rights and while she studies, she runs a legal firm where she prepares briefs for her partner who appears in court on her behalf. Kanchan is particularly interested in the cause of women prisoners who are largely cross-border refugees and from underprivileged homes. No one is born a criminal, she says. These women need help and understanding like anyone else. This line of work will help Kanchan further her career and pave the way for a PhD after her LLM. It will give her exposure to apply her learning in the practical field. It may also provide an opening for her to work with international NGOs which would help in her research on issues relating to human rights. Kanchan was the first physically disabled girl guide to represent India in the international camp in Sussex, UK, where she most successfully completed all the physical and other activities that had been planned for the participants. This 25-day tour turned out to be most interesting for Kanchan as it included living with a British family for 12 days. She experienced British hospitality and has happy memories of her experience. No one asked me about my disability, she says. They cared for me most lovingly, took me shopping and showed me the sights. Kanchan was most impressed to find a braille guide at the museums she visited. She felt comfortable and carries the warm memory of her stay with her even today. In 1994, Kanchan received the President's Award for Girl Guides. She is the first and only disabled person to receive this honour. Always interested in nature, Kanchan took active part in mountaineering, trekking, rock climbing, river crossing, bird watching through different sounds, all through her school and college life. She also trained with several mountaineering outfits and scaled many peaks. In 1998, Kanchan's name was mentioned in the Limka Book of Records for extensive nature exploration and her courageous outdoor feats. Between 1994 and 1997, Kanchan received the Olav Award from the International Guide Association, the President's Award, the SCORE Award from Sport Communication and Research Education and the Governor's Certificate from Bharat Scouts and Guides. In 2003, in recognition of her manifold activities, NAB India awarded this courageous lady the Neelam Kanga Prize for all-round achievement, applauding her love for nature and her spirit of adventure. But Kanchan's ambition does not end here. She plans in the future to scale the 15,000-foot barrier in mountain climbing when other visually impaired persons have not been allowed to go further than 14,400 feet. She ideally wants to be a legal consultant so that she can devote enough time to social work, research and to writing books on legal and gender issues. A person of many facets and a will of iron, Kanchan is a true example of a lady who deals with her disability graciously and has been ennobled by it. She is empathetic and understanding of other people's foibles, peculiarities, bothers and ailments, offering a helping hand to those whose society turns away from. Hemant J. Patil Honorary Secretary National Association for the Blind, India